Hi, and welcome to another PowerShell tutorial video on the PS Write HTML module. So we've already seen the Visio diagrams and the tables that we can make with this module. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a neat little widget that you can also create with the module, uh, which is really a calendar. But what we can actually do with the calendar is actually add events into the calendar programmatically. So we can actually make a very like visual look to an event viewer uh, so we can scrape our event logs and actually put them into a calendar or what you would able to be able to do as well which we're not going to be doing this example we're going to be doing the event viewer example uh, but something else that you'd be able to do is also scrape your event viewer also for active directory changes or scrape active directory for created dates um, and be able to put um, events in the calendar of the creation dates of the different accounts and give people access to this page to see when accounts were created um, or if an account was actually created and to know what date it was created on. So there's a lot of other examples that you would be able to use this calendar um, in other dashboards uh, to easily visualize different data sets uh, involving dates and time. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started with just creating a very simple calendar example. And then we're going to be taking a look at the programmatic approach with the event viewer. So let's go ahead and let's get started here. So like all the other uh, PS write HTML uh, things, we need to create our new HTML object and our name here for this object. We're just going to name it. Uh, our test calendar here. And then our file path, uh, what we're actually going to do is create a file path variable just at the top here, just to make that nice. And we can also change it very easily. So let's go ahead and let's just take the path of our folder here. Just going to be here and we're going to name it calendar.html and we're going to put the file path variable in the file path parameter and then we are going to go ahead and just do a dash show here show html perfect and let's go ahead and let's open and close the curly brackets and then inside of our curly brackets, we're going to do a new HTML calendar. And then right away, we're going to go ahead and open and close in curly brackets. And then in here is where we can actually put our calendar events. So we're just going to make a very simple one here. New calendar event. And we're going to say title. We're going to say recording programmer video and then we can put in a description here record a new video for YouTube and then we can go ahead and put a start date here and now for the start date all we're going to do is actually pass in the get date parameter and then what I also like to do with the new HTML is just add the online uh, parameter here, and that will just reference the style sheets that are online. And let's go ahead and let's actually run this code here. And we will see it pop up. We actually see our event just right here. We can actually zoom in a little bit here and we can actually see record new video for YouTube when we actually hover over it. We can see that the current date is the 7th of September here and you probably can't really see that on the recording from what I can see. It is like a little lighter yellow color and then we have our calendar event. We can see that it is 4:49 p.m. and we are supposed to record the jacked programmer video and this is the month view. You can actually even go into the weekly view and we would actually be able to see it just right here. And if we go into the day view, so we have our Thursday here and there is 
our recording and then by default when you just do a start event it does it in a block of kind of seems like it does like a little bit of like a half hour block or like 45 uh it's actually a one hour block it seems to kind of register it as and we can even do a list month here so here we'll actually have all of our events for the month in a list which we only have one right now but what we can actually do is if we close out of this web browser here we can actually go ahead and add a new event here we can actually say new calendar event and we can say title and we can go ahead and we can actually say uh let's put one in here uh which we're gonna say we're gonna have a powerlifting uh meet here and we're gonna say the description we're gonna say first competition in a year and then we are going to go ahead and put the start date so what i want to do here is i'm going to just put a little variable wrapper in here and we're just going to do a get dash date and then the year we're going to put 2023 the month we're going to put september so the 9th and then the date is going to be the 16th and we're going to say that the hour is going to be 14 minute is going to be zero um, so there we have it's going to start september 16th 2023 at two o'clock in the afternoon and then we can actually even put an end date here so all i'm actually going to do is copy paste this start date and paste it in here and what we're going to do is we're going to end it at 21 hours. Uh, so that'll be nine o'clock. So if we actually go ahead and we run this now. Uh, we actually do have a little issue here because it seems like it put it on the wrong date. Did I forget to put a date here? Oh, I put date and not day so just be aware that if you put date not going to be the proper value you need to put the dash day as the parameter and if we run that here there we have it on the 16th we can see that we have something at 2 p.m and if we do the list month we will actually get the start time and the end time of this event um, and if we do the day view here and we can actually go ahead and do uh we can actually go into the month and if you click on the date you will actually get brought to the day here and we can see that the block of time is actually expanded so this is how you can easily make a calendar now of course this is just manually putting things into code we would typically want to be able to kind of fetch things programmatically so if you do have an API to get different calendar events, maybe a Microsoft calendar or any calendar that offers the ability to go fetch things via API. You can easily go fetch those and I'll show you how you can program and programmatically insert them into the calendar here. So what we're actually going to go ahead and do, we're going to keep this exact calendar and we are going to go ahead and we are just going to erase these two events and we are going to enter in here and we are going to start just above so what we want to first do is actually collect all of our events now i do have a specific video on the event log itself we are just going to do a very simple version of getting the event log so all we're going to do is we're going to do get dash event log and we are going to get the log the application log and we are just going to get the events within the last 31 days. So I'm going to do the after parameter and we're going to get date and we're going to add days and we're going to add minus 31 days or you can add month and just do a minus one for the month. Uh, but I'm going to specify days in case we may want to change this. Um, I just want for the last 31 days, maybe you'd want to specify just 30 days, maybe you want just the last week um, but we're going to do the last 31 days here 
And that should give us the different events here. So if we actually just run that piece of code and we should have that. So there are all of our different events here. We can see that we do get quite a lot of events. And then what we want to do is we actually, once we're inside this new calendar, what we actually want to do is do a for each event in events and then open and closing curly brackets. And then what I want to do is just a new calendar event. I want to say title. Now this is where it's going to be a little difficult because we're not going to have really the dot notation. And then even if we actually run this code here in entirety, you're going to notice that we still don't get the dot notation. So let's actually go ahead. Let's just try it out here. Um, Cause as you guys know, I really like to run the code to be able to get the dot notation when I'm in a for each loop to know what my events are. So let's just close out of here. Let's go back into our code and let's look at the event dot. We actually don't get the proper uh, dot notation here. So, and that's because it is in a nested uh, block. So if we actually just run the for each loop itself, there we're gonna actually see, we have some execution here. We're just going to stop that right away. And now if we do a dot notation, we're going to see that we actually get all of our uh, dot notations. So what we're going to say is for the title, we're going to go ahead and put it as the source. Uh, the description, we're going to go ahead and put in our event message. Um, and then the start date, we are going to go ahead and we're going to put the event dot uh, time generated and that should be good here for now uh, so let's go ahead and let's run this entire code here so it's going to fetch all the events and then it's going to go ahead and insert them all into the calendar and then that calendar is going to pop up uh, sometimes that can take a little bit of time just depending on how long it takes to get your events and there we actually have all of our events. Now I do have quite a bit of events here because we actually put in all of our information, errors and warnings. What I find more useful is to only show my errors and my warnings usually if I'm putting event log data into a calendar because I'm more probably more likely interested in the errors or the warnings so I can easily look at them, see when they happen, if they happen at a regular time every day um, and whatnot. Now this machine is a test machine. So we're going to see there's going to be quite a lot of errors, um, but that is okay. That will give us a good example to look at. So let's go ahead and let's create a switch statement here and let's switch on the event dot entry type. We're going to open and close in curly brackets. Now in here, I want to do errors and I want to do warning. Anything else I don't really care about. So I'm not even going to put a default. And the only thing I'm going to do is cut this calendar event here. And we're going to paste the calendar event. And then we're going to paste the calendar event for the warnings. And let's go ahead and let's run this now. So now we're only going to get the errors and the warning events in our calendar. So let's go ahead and let's see what that looks like now. Now, as we can see, we get a little bit less. So we don't have like 300 events per day. If we look at the month, we can clearly see all the different events that happen um, every day. What time they happen at and we can hover over and see exactly what the message was for that. And because we did the last 31 days, if we look at the month view, we can see that September is filled up. And if we go to the previous here, we can see that August is also there until the 7th of August. We don't have anything previous because we did specify only the last 31 days, but all the events are in blue. 
So that doesn't really tell me easily if it's a warning or if it's an error, because I would probably like to concentrate on the errors first. So what I like to do is because we've already done a switch here and we separated already errors and warnings, what we can actually add to the new calendar event is add a color here. And I like to add the red for the errors. And then for the warnings, I like to make them orange. Uh, you can make them yellow. I find yellow is a little bit hard to read uh, with the calendar. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's just run the calendar creation once again. And there we have it. So we have a few oranges here. Uh, as we can see, the vast majority are definitely red. Um, and if we go in the list for the month here, we can actually once again see the color of the event and be able to look to see what we actually need to tackle. Uh, so that is very handy, I find. And if we look at August, we can see it there as well. So this is a very uh, easy tool to use. Uh, so there is our little warnings that we do have. Uh, and then the rest are mostly errors here. Uh, so you can use this for, let's say, your NPS server to find out the failures um, and the successes for the different logins, if that's how you're managing your VPN or your Wi-Fi logins. Um, for Active Directory to store account creations and maybe account deletions. So account creations, maybe have them in a color of green and deletions have them in the color of red. This is just a very good tool that you can, again, visualize your data in like a time fashion. Um, event log, uh, AD. Maybe you have your own custom log that you write for your other scripts that you would also be able to visualize with this data here. Or like I said at the beginning, if you have APIs, um, available to you for different type of calendars that you would like to pull. Um, maybe write something to scrape the Ticketmaster website to scrape when the different concerts are and when the different tickets go on sale. You could populate your calendar that way as well. Uh, there are a lot of different uses for this calendar. Uh, and like I said, the PS Write HTML module has a lot of cool functionality. We've taken a look at three of them so far. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at the dashboard where we can actually combine all these different cool features into one page, have them separated by different panels, have them collapsible and expandable so you can see the data that you want and be able to interact with it as well. If you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. and I'll do my best to answer every single one of you. If it's something that can benefit the entire community, I'll be sure to make a video on it as well. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.